This year marks 175 years since the cornerstone for the Washington Monument was set into place. Faith Saley has the story of the long and challenging road to its completion. In a town full of monuments, there's one that stands above them all. The tallest, the simplest, the most straightforward, the most direct. It's very much like Washington himself in that way, actually. Paul Goldberger is professor of design and architecture at the New School in New York and says the monument's iconic design was not, in fact, by design. Because Robert Mills, who designed the Washington Monument, originally envisioned a classical colonnade going around the bottom, basically kind of like a round classical temple. They had all kinds of financial problems as well as political problems, and so only the obelisk was built. Construction began in 1848 and was painfully slow due to the challenge of 19th century crowdfunding, according to Mike Litterst, spokesperson for the National Mall. No one person could give more than a dollar to the Washington Monument because they wanted it to be a monument of the people. But when everybody can only give a dollar and you need 250000 plus to finish the project, that's going to be a problem over time. Financial troubles aside, the monument had no shortage of groups who wanted to be associated with it. Stones came from all corners of, of America. And its stairwells engraved stones give us a window into 19th century America. And here we have the Fire Department of Philadelphia proudly showing off what was, in 1854, a state-of-the-art fire engine. Masons, locomotive makers, temperance societies, a time capsule of states that were tenuously united. This theme that the stones here give us a glimpse into mid 19th century America is illustrated no better than on the Tennessee stone. The Federal Union, it must be preserved. We're talking mid 1850s here. This is a direct reference to the storm clouds that are gathering that will eventually erupt in civil war right. in 1861. Even foreign countries left their mark, and there was a legendary stone from the Vatican. Pius IX sent a stone from the ruins of the Temple of Concord in the Forum in Rome, and this outraged a number of people in the country, specifically a political party called the Know Nothings. Their platform was decidedly anti-Catholic and anti-foreigners. The Know Nothings threw the so-called Pope Stone into the Potomac, then staged a coup, taking over the society charged with building the monument in 1855. Construction ground to a halt. For more than 20 years, the obelisk was a stump. Cows were kept on the site during the Civil War, almost as if to symbolize the United States' unrealized ideals. The centennial of American independence comes in 1876. That's the renewed interest not to just finish it, we're either gonna finish it or we're gonna tear it down because this is a complete embarrassment. And it's one of the reasons that if you look closely at the monument today, you can see a difference in its marble cladding. When it was finally finished in 1885, it stood at 555 feet and five and one eighth inches tall and was the world's tallest structure. The Washington Monument is just a pure shape, and it suggests that Washington is an idea as much as a man, an idea of singularity, an idea of clarity, perfection, and, and heading for the sky.